In this lab we will create a large cheek wound to demonstrate the pros and cons of a single pedicle advancement flap. You can see that if we try to close this wound primarily there will be a lot of distortion and tension and that distortion could affect the mouth and the eyelids. So with the single pedicle advancement flap here we're going to mobilize the skin about the neck and essentially stretch it. So the single pedicle advancement flap relies on stretching of the local skin and it works by distributing the tension across a broader length of closure. Now it's important to note that we are not bringing any new skin to the area. Um, it is simple but with elastic retraction that can occur post-operatively, this can induce some distortion. And along similar lines, the risk of dehiscence is higher when compared to, say, a well-performed transposition flap. So we're going to create two parallel to slightly converging incisions that is approximately the same width uh, from ventral to dorsal as the wound and the length of these incisions is going to be approximately the same length as the cranial to caudal extent of the wound. So here we're making our skin and subcutaneous incisions and then this flap of skin is going to be completely elevated from the underlying tissues. Um, just like with all of these types of flaps, we want to keep as much of that underlying subcutaneous tissue and paniculus muscle, um, some of the platysma in this case, along with the flap. A combination of sharp and blunt dissection will be used. So once this has been mobilized you can see how we can stretch this flap into place and here I'm placing some corresponding marks for where the skin will be opposed to demonstrate how we are going to advance this flap and therefore there will be tension along the proximal or dorsal and ventral aspects of this closure site thereby distributing the tension away cranially. Um, so that flap is held temporarily in place with some towel clamps in the skin or the subcutaneous tissues and watch here with each of these interrupted deep subcutaneous sutures we are going to pull the flap forward or cranially so the corresponding site of the suture bites is different. And we're going to, again, as demonstrated here, bite relatively cordially, pull that skin forward, and then take a bite more cranially. So we're sort of fudging the sutures here. Um, I like to start from the base, where there is lower risk of dehiscence, and then gradually keep pulling that flap forward. So if we've done this properly, we can see here that these cranial most, or the, actually the most distal aspect of the closure, or the flap, should be relatively tension free. Now there is some tautness in the flap, this is to be expected because again we've stretched the skin, but hopefully the tension at the closure sites is acceptable. And now at this point, we would add another subcutaneous layer and close the skin.